Today, I am going to show you how to set up your budget with Monarch Money. Hey there, I'm Brittany Flammer, a financial coach with videos all about budgeting and money saving tips for you and your family. Today, we are focusing on setting up your budget. I'm gonna show you how to customize it to your needs. This is just one part in a video series all about Monarch, so make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you get notified of all the other Monarch tutorials. Go ahead and log into Monarch Money. You can use the app on your phone or you can use the web browser. Also good to know, Monarch Money gives you a free seven day trial. Use my link in the description box below to get a free 30 day trial. To customize what it shows up on your dashboard, go to the top right, click customize. Now you can toggle on and off whatever you want to see. You can drag to rearrange the order that things appear in. Um, the getting started, once you've gotten started, I like to turn that off. Plan progress, that's just another word for budget. It's showing you your overall budget, your income and expenses for the month. The spending trend, this will show you your spending this month compared to last month. The transactions review, this will just show any transactions that someone needs to review. Like I said, you can drag to rearrange them. It's only going to rearrange them on your computer. If you want them rearranged on the app on your phone, you will do that on your phone. They can be separate. Now let's talk about linking your bank accounts. If you are brand new, it will probably prompt you to link your accounts, but if you're not brand new or if you have some accounts linked and want to add some more, you can just go on the left-hand side to accounts and on the top right, you can add an account. Search for whatever bank account, credit card, whatever you want to add. In this example, let's add a Chime account. Um, now you'll wanna go ahead and click on it and it's going to show you your different options for linking. It, in this example, it's recommending we use Plaid, but there are other options down below. Plaid is the most successful. Um, so let's go with Plaid and you're just gonna type in your username and password for Chime and it is going to link your account. The biggest complaint I've seen from clients is having issues with the connectivity of their banks. So do the one that they suggest, but if you're having issues, you can come back in and try linking it a different way through MX or through Finicity and see if that works for you. Now it's time to set up your budget. Now you might be inclined to click the budget on the left hand side of the screen to customize it. I don't recommend doing that. You can customize it through there, but it's much easier when you're first getting started to go through settings. So go down below, click on your account. This is a demo, so mine just says demo, but yours will have your name. Um, go to settings then select categories. If you are brand new, it's going to pop up showing you some of the things you can do. You can just click next through the screens or you can skip it if you want. Monarch's budget comes with 60 preset categories. These are very generic categories that most people will use. Um, I highly recommend, recommend customizing it to you and your needs. Like any other budget, it has your income and then all of your expenses. Their expenses are categorized by groups, like all of the car stuff is in one group, all of the house related stuff is in a group, all food stuff's in a group, um, which some people really like. If that works for you, keep it that way. I personally like to do mine a little bit different. I like to have my fixed bills or my fixed expenses, those boring bills. And then I like the variable expenses or lifestyle expenses, the ones I have control over. And then I like to do my savings. I've got the shorter term sinking fund savings as well as the long term or investment savings. Whatever, however you choose to organize them, you're going to edit and I'll show you how to customize it however you want. Um, you can go ahead and just click on a category to edit it. Um, and in here, you can choose a different emoji. You can have a lot of fun with that. Um, click on the name to rename it and type in whatever you want. So for this example, um, my husband is James. So this will be James paycheck and just save it. And it's automatically going to update everywhere in your settings, your budget, your forecast. Um, this interest category, if you want to rearrange them, you can just drag it and drop it where you want. If you want to put it in order of when you receive the income or small, largest to smallest, however you want, you can drag and rearrange. Um, I also make money. So I'm going to open up this category and I'm going to rename it. Um, we have no other income. So maybe I want to delete a category, select it and deactivate and then disable category. Now you cannot delete categories 
in Monarch Money. You can deactivate them or disable them, which will gray them out and it won't appear, but you cannot delete them completely. Now let's customize the rest of the budget. Um, it is a lot easier to drag and rearrange rather than delete and create new ones. If you want to move an entire group, you can click on the top of the group and drag it to rearrange it wherever you want it. Um, here, I'll move charity down and I'll move housing up um, and then I'll rename a group. So just click edit to rename the group and I'm gonna change housing to fix bills. Also, you want to note in the group option, it will give you the option to budget by category or budget by group. I personally am going to choose budget by category. This means each item, each category item will have its own budget. So you can have one budget for your mortgage, one for your utilities, one, everyone has its own budget. If you budget by group, that means all of your fixed expenses will have just one total overall budget. Let's look at the mortgage. Everything looks good. I don't want to change anything. Um, so I'll just exit out. Rent, since I'm paying a mortgage, I don't need rent. So I will click on it, I'll deactivate it, disable it, and you can see that it's now grayed out, but it hasn't disappeared. Home improvement, for me, that's a sinking fund. I don't spend stuff every month, so I'm gonna drag it down later, and I'll show you in a few minutes how I handle sinking funds. Now I'm just gonna find any other fixed bills or boring bills that I want to go in this category and I will drag them up. If you've got a car payment, I am paying that every single month, I would drag that up into my fixed bills. Gas, some people argue whether this is fixed bill or should be variable. I personally put it in the fixed bill because I pay it every single month no matter what, how much we spend on gas. Um, garbage, I'm gonna drag it up. But I wanna edit this because our city bill includes our water and our garbage. So I'm gonna edit, rename it to city bill, and I'll save. Now my water is included in my city bill, so I can go ahead and delete water. So now I'm just gonna to continue to drag until all categories under the fixed bills are included. Um, an example, if I have student loans, personally, I'm gonna put that under fixed bill and drag it up there because I'm paying it every month. If you need to add a category, at the bottom, just click create category, choose the emoji and whatever name you want. Um, for example, um, they have electric and natural gas combined, but for me, they come as two separate bills. So I'm going to separate them here. Now you don't want too many categories. The more categories you have, the more you have to track, but you don't want too few categories because then your budget won't tell you anything. So it's like the Goldilocks. You gotta find what works just for you. And that's just by trial and error. For example, I have some clients who lump all of their utilities into one category and that works for them. Personally, I separate them. It's whatever works for you. Auto transport, most of these I could go ahead and delete. Public transport, I don't use public transportation where I live, so I'm gonna deactivate that one. If you do use public transportation, you could move that in like every month you have a Metro card that you pay for, you could move that to fixed bills or your variable bills. Auto maintenance, I don't use this monthly. Once again, for me, this is a sinking fund, so I'm gonna drag it down and I'll deal with that later. Um, taxi and ride shares. I don't use these, so I want to delete them. So I'll click deactivate. But when I go to do this, I see that there are 18 transactions categorized here. It's going to show me however many transactions I have categorized in that category. So I can click on the transactions and it'll bring me and show me all of the transactions for that category. Now you might see the, you might see all these transactions and decide, oh, I don't want to delete that category. I'm going to keep it. Um, but for me, all of those transactions are Ubers. That means I used it when I was on vacation. So I don't want it. So I still want to delete this category. Go back to our categories um, for taxi and rideshare. I'm going to deactivate it. But because we have transactions under taxi and rideshare, I need to tell them where they go. So if I'm going to delete this category, they need to go somewhere. So I am going to choose vacation because all my Uber rides, I only do use Uber when I'm on vacation. So I will click on the categories, find travel and vacation. Then I'm going to go ahead and disable category. So it's going to get rid of my taxi ride shares. So now this category is gone and all of those transactions have been recategorized to vacation. If your bank accounts are already linked and it's imported your transactions for you, it will automatically categorize for you. Um, Monarch Money does a decent job. It's not 100%, but they do a decent job. But I'm going to show you in the next video how to customize and automate it so it categorizes exactly how you want. But continuing on, let's go to charity. Um, 
I could, maybe this is a fixed expense and I'm gonna pay it every single month, or maybe I wanna move it down, or maybe I wanna delete it. I personally am going to include it in my fixed expenses, but if you want to delete an entire group, just click that edit and delete. We'll go ahead and delete bills, utilities. Um, in this example, bills and utilities has a category. I've deactivated it, but it is still there. Now you can't delete categories, but you can still delete the group, but it's going to ask me where I want to move the category where I want to move water to. So even though I've been, it's been deactivated, I can't delete. So I just choose the other category, all the stuff that I've deleted or deactivated and don't want, don't think I'm going to use. I just put it in other. Um, so it's easy for me to find if I do decide I want it in the future. Food and dining, you could keep in its own group. I don't, but a lot of people like to. Um, groceries, pretty standard. Restaurants and bars, coffee shops. I think I would move coffee shops into restaurants because um, I think less categories is easier and to me they're the same, um, but whatever works for you. So once again, I'll deactivate. It shows me all the transactions in there. I'll choose to move those category, those everything categorized there into restaurants. So this is the basic on how to customize your budget. I'm going to go ahead and keep doing mine. Um, I'll move through it really fast so you can fast forward to the next step if you want. Now, when I look through, my categories are organized how I want, in the words I want, and this is automatically going to be reflected in the budget. Some of these are sinking funds. I go in depth in this and how to do sinking funds in another video. But for today, just know that I like to lump all my sinking funds together and I can turn on a rollover. So money will roll over anything extra. If I didn't spend anything on Christmas this month, it will roll over to next month. So let's click on vacation, toggle it to roll over, toggle it on. If I already have money saved for vacation, I can type the balance in there. Now let's go ahead and look at your budget. On the left-hand side, you can select budget and every category you have edited will show up here in the order that you created it. Now, a lot of these will already have numbers in here from transactions that have been imported. Um, it's probably not gonna be perfect at the beginning, so let's go through the budget. So we see James's money. I can click on it and enter in how much I expect to make. Now, once your transactions have been imported, it's gonna throw, show you the last three months of transactions. Um, we are in March, so it'll be showing December, January, February. Um, and I can, if I click on February, it will enter in, automatically put in the exact dollar amount from February. Or here, this is an average of three months over on the left. If you click that, it will put in the average for you. Um, but James, a salary, so this is the same every month. When you link your bank account, it is automatically going to import your transactions. Now, every bank is a little bit different. Most banks on average import a couple months of transactions. Sometimes it might only import a couple weeks. Sometimes it could import up to a year. It varies from institution to institution. There's no guarantee. Just know that it probably won't import every single transaction, but it's a good place to get started. So I highly recommend if the average is really low and you know that you probably spend more than that on a typical month, put in what you think you will spend. So Brittany's paycheck, I have no transactions from the past. Maybe I'm just linking this account, um, but I'm planning on making $300. So I'll enter in 300. So now the number is automatically going to update to show me how much money I have left to budget. I like using the average of the past three months, but when you're first getting started, it's probably not completely accurate. It's a good baseline, good place to start. But like I said, if you think you will spend more than that or make more than that, type in the higher number. As you go through each category, you might notice changes you want to make. For example, natural gas, maybe I really do want to keep it lumped in with electricity. So you can just click on the category, click that gear icon, and then you can customize it there. You can delete it, disable, activate it, activate it, disactivate it, deactivate it, just like in the settings. I just think it's easier to go to settings when you're first getting started. Um, and it will be set up, the budget will be set up in the order you put your categories in setting. 
unless you don't have any money budgeted for a category, then it goes down to the bottom. As soon as you add money, it'll move it back up to where you had it. Um, so it's gonna stay within the group you have it in, but if, it's, if there's no money budgeted for it, it will go down to the bottom. So for example, fun money, let's type in $50. It's automatically gonna update it and move it to where I, the order I had it in for your settings. Um, you go through every single category, update to the average or to what you think your expenses will be for the month. And like I said, the top right's gonna show you how much money you have left to budget. If it's green, that means you have money left over. That's money that you can put towards debts or towards savings goals. Um, if it is red, like most people's, that means you need to find somewhere to cut back. So you can go through your categories and see where you can cut back. If you're trying to pay off debt, like credit cards, for example, or create long-term savings goals, I will talk about those in another video in detail. In the meantime, I just wanna show you a few tips when you are first getting started. Cash flow is a great visual for you to see where your money is going. Click on that cash flow tab and the very top, it's going to show you your monthly income versus expenses. So income's green, expenses are red. The goal is to have more green than red. Um, this is simply showing the money that goes, comes into your accounts and the money that goes out of your accounts. Money transferred, if you transfer money between an account or if you're just paying off a credit card, that's considered a transfer and that won't count in the cash flow. I like seeing the visual of where your money goes. So we can look at, you can do the Sankey diagram. I personally prefer the bar chart. So let's look at the bar chart, but you can toggle between groups or categories. For now, let's just look at the categories. Um, this is a great visual to see where the money is going. Um, so let's click on the month. Um, up above, it'll show me March, but March isn't over. So I wanna look at a full month. So let's go to February. Um, scroll up, just click on February, and it will the bar chart will update for February. And you can see here the mortgage, is the largest, that's the most common. Um, in this example, if I could pay off the car and student loans, I'd have over a $1,000 a month, extra a month, towards funds that I could put towards fun stuff. This is just a great visual tool to see your problem areas, where all your money is going, areas where you can cut back in. Once again, if you are just getting started, not all of your transactions will be imported, so it's not going to be completely accurate. Eat as you, it's a, you have a good baseline for getting started, but then as you use it in real time when your transactions are imported, it is going to update and be more accurate. So each month it will get more and more accurate. If you are now thinking that maybe Monarch Money isn't the right budgeting app for you, check out my video here on my favorite apps, but make sure you stay tuned, you're subscribed and hit the bell to so get notified. I have videos coming out about how to handle sinking funds, how to automate things, how to deal with credit cards, all coming up in the next videos. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.